So, uh, to start things off, thank you very much for doing this today with us. Uh, it's a glorious day. As you can see, the weather is just absolutely perfect. Fabulous. Yeah, I like weather like this. This is really my kind Do you of prefer driving in weather like this? Um, I prefer weather like this. Whether yeah, I'm driving or not driving. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, I may know who this man is, but a lot of people out there, sadly, don't know who you are. So please, introduce yourself. And what is it exactly that you do? My name is Steven Tan. I'm a Malaysian and I came in about 10 years ago to start a company called Mazdam Philippines. And so I run a company, which, you know, sounds a lot more glamorous than it really is. <laughs> it's just like a slave, you know what I mean? You're a slave? Yeah. How is it that you're a slave? I'm a happy slave, right? The job is a, kind of like a 24 hour job. You never really, you never really let go, even though you're on vacation, whether you're going diving, whether you're saying, but that's, that's the life I choose and I enjoy. Is Stephen Tan your absolutely complete and true name? Or is there like a different name that you carry? Ah, very insightful. Right, so Stephen is not in my passport. But Stephen is a name that was given to me when I was 12 uh, in a church. I'm a Christian. And so it's called a Christian name. Okay. And many of us have that. So if in Malaysia, somebody says, I'm David Tan, the David is often not in the passport. But I okay, so what yeah. is on your passport? Uh, my name is Tan Tekwa, or in Mandarin, it's called Chen, Chen Te Hua. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt. I'm, I'm, can, can you say that again? Chen Te Hua. You know, Stephen Tan is very common in there are maybe. 10,000 of us in Metro Manila. So. Yeah, but there's only one you. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully. Maybe you can help me out. Why is it that shorter people like you and or I are just so darn lovable? Uh, I'm not sure if we're lovable, <laughs> but I think maybe notorious but comes easily to mind. Notorious? Yeah, notorious. Or playful, maybe mischievous. Um, what makes you notorious? I think we lack, I think because we are small and so we have to compensate by them, by being, trying to get more attention. What's the best thing about Malaysia that you can't get in the Philippines? Food. It's got to be food. The food it comes to mind easily. Malaysia has, I guess, a best kept secret in food. Anybody who's lived there will tell you that we can't replicate the food from Malaysia, Malaysian food. It's the, it is the best. Is it the spice, sir? Is it the meat or is it the ingredients? It's a culture. Because of the culture, there are three major group of uh, ethnic or racial background. Uh, Chinese, Malay, uh, Indian. Of those three cultures or types of food that you mentioned, which would be your favorite? I like Chinese food, but more than more than Chinese food. Like, it's a lot of Chinese that food that we know today, right? If yeah. you walk to Chinese restaurant. There's not one Chinese food, but the food that we associate with Chinese food is Cantonese food. Yes. Right, because that's the biggest export from Hong Kong and Southern China. And so everywhere you go to, like roast duck, and fried rice, and noodles, those are all Cantonese food. But, but more than that, I think that fusion of like nasi lemak, curry laksa, Chao Kui Tiao, you know, on and on and on. Those are typically very strong, distinctively Malaysian food. I don't know all the foods that you just mentioned, but the names itself is already making my mm. mouth water. It just, even to roll it off the tongue, it sounds so good. Yeah. When you finish a day at the office, um, how is it exactly do you unwind? Do you pop open a ball of scotch, a beer? Do you fry something, uh, pick up a sport? How do you unwind? A typical week, typical day. From being a slave. Yeah, at the end of the day, normally end of the day could be four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. End of the day could be eight o'clock in the evening, right? It's that when work starts to wind down and I would go to the fridge in the office. So we have two offices, right? One in Kati and one in Laguna, Laguna, I go through the fridge, uh, maybe there's a beer in there, maybe there's a bottle of wine in there. And if there's people in the office, um, I'll get a glass, we'll share that. 
uh, it's a really nice way to unwind the day with everybody else and I always have something in a fridge in the office. Sometimes friends comes over. What's the one thing that's always in the fridge? Is it a beer? Is it a bottle of wine? Uh, wine and beer. and Both? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and also scotch in the office. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, scotch. Uh, I, I, I like the collection of scotch and wine in my office. They're not expensive stuff, but they're just diverse, you know, like Japanese whiskey, scotch. I like to collect those things too in my stomach. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies to speak of? I do. I, uh, I do. I have a, a, a ghost hobby that I'm chasing. A um, ghost it's, hobby? It's called golf and I've been teased everywhere that I go about like, when are you going to pick up golf? You say you're going to do golf. Have you done golf yet? I said, well, it's one of those elusive hobbies that I'm trying to get to. So maybe one day, if you ask me again, I may have done that. But my hobby is that this weekend, I'm going diving. Diving? Yeah, it's a You're test You're a dive. diver. Yeah, this week I'm going diving. Diving is one of great life, greatest pleasure. And if you live in Philippines and you don't dive... That sucks. Sayang. How do you jump inside the water and think a shark's not going to get me? It's oh, too you, freaky. You jump into the water and hope there's a shark for you to see. Are you nuts? Yeah, I... Why? In a couple of years... Have you years, ever seen the movie Jaws? Yes, yes. I mean, Jaws is tragic, right? Yeah, there, man. There, it should, there shouldn't be a movie called Jaws because, you know, how many people die from shark attack a year, Kako? How many? Take a uh, guess. I'm assuming it's probably a heck of a lot less than people driving and texting. Yes. Okay. And, right, if I was a shark, it's like, it's such tragedy, right? Yeah, we I get We die by the millions every year because, you know, people are afraid of us. They think we eat them. We don't eat them. True. Uh, I like how people say the shark came out of nowhere. Dude, you were in the water. Yeah, this is my That's house. That's their environment. <laughs> and you come and eat my fins? True. Which is why I keep my butt out the water. Right? I would walk in a restaurant and if they serve shark fin, I walk out, literally. I've been to Tubotaha one time and I think, maybe I'll go back again, but everybody who is a diver should dive Tubotaha at least at once. At least once. Yeah. It, is, it is a diving bucket list. I was actually named after a very famous diver. Jack Cousteau. Yes. My full name is Jacques Carlo. Well, that's my first name and I was named after Jacques Cousteau because my mom did uh, was watching a lot of Jacques Cousteau when she was pregnant with me. Wow, impressive. Very impressive. I uh, I now have a very high impression of your mom. <laughs> of my mom, yes. yes. Of me, no. <laughs> she gave you the name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, golf could change people too. Yeah, they become bigger. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry. To the golf. I, don't mean, I don't mean. I don't mean that. You guys walk a lot, like maybe twenty thousand steps. To the if you don't go in the buggy, okay. If you walk the eighteen hole, that's absolutely fantastic. But playing golf, I mean, if you jump into the golf cart, that's part of the fun. I mean, you get to drive like a maniac without bumping anything. Hopefully, you don't, because if a tree crosses on the golf course, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Do you have a particular favorite Mazda car? One that is unattainable, but can be quite cliche-ish. Uh, I think maybe Cosmo Sports will be one of will be the one. How come? Co Cosmo Sports is the first. Uh, I would term it the first sports car with the rotary engine that Mazda built. Rotary uh, engine. It was quite ahead of its time. I think a lot of Mazda cars are like this, but that particular one was um, was ahead of its time. It was it gained fame for being featured in. Uh, a Japanese uh, Ultraman series. Okay, which brings me to the next question. Yeah. Do you have a favorite non-Mazda car? Yes, I do. And that would be? Uh, Shelby Cobra. Shelby Cobra? Yeah. All right, I, I remember distinctively when I was in my <laughs> early 20s, I was driving and I, I was in Malaysia. It was late at night, maybe 12, 1 in the morning, and I was driving. And this loud sound just shoot past me. Was a Shelby Cobra. It was the first time in my life I saw a Shelby Cobra. I've never seen a car ever since. I just went past me, 
guy was driving with a, a goggles on because Shelby Cooper does have a windscreen in you. And I absolutely love it. What a design, what a machine. What a what, sound. What a sound. Uh, it's not particularly amazing engineering by today's standard. No. Right? Um, some people say it won't stop. Uh, some people say it won't stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's obvious that we are in a CX-5 and I've reviewed this car already. And I think the one question that I could not answer was the question, why? First, thank you to whoever figured out to take whatever is inside a CX-9 and put it in a car that's 500 kilograms lighter because it is just way too much damn fun. Second is that, well, what was the inspiration about doing that? I mean, I'm sure so many people have said, you know, it'd be cool if you put that inside that and that inside that. Well, Mazda actually did, it seems that it did that with the CX-5, but is there a reason why you guys decided to actually do it now amidst, you know, getting to the point where Mazda will eventually by 2030 start looking at the hybrid kind of an era? Is, was, is this sort of like the last hurrah of the big engine in a small car? Um, I, I wouldn't ca characterize it as a big engine. It's just a very efficient use of, um, in engineering we call it force induction, right? You put more air into the engine so you produce more power. Mm -hmm. And it appears in a CX-9, which is, you know, per it's, it's kind of a perfect engine for a CX-9 because it's bigger and it carries more. And then uh, we introduced the Master 6. Yeah. And so it went to the Master 6. It became well-loved in the Master 6. And, um, you know, we've asked for this for some time now. And I said, it'd be great to have this in a CX-5. Lots of people want it to be in a Master 3. But I thought Master 3 may have less appeal because it's a more of a small compact car with a 2.5 turbo engine, which is, you know, it becomes like a boy racer kind of car. Uh, nothing wrong with that, except no. that I think it's a bit out of character. But a CX-5 um, is like a great little package to put in a 2.5 turbo engine in. At 230 something, 240 horsepower, it's by no means earth shattering. But in a package like this, it becomes really elegant. And quick. You know, I, I've not driven this car, by the way. You haven't driven this I car? I have not driven this car. For the record, this is the first time I'm sitting in it. You want me to stop the car? <laughs> Most, if not all, well, I can't say all, but most of the cars of Mazda, as, you, as promised, is supposed to be hybrid by that time, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess like, the question is like, will it still be uh, Mazda's famous five-year free PMS? Because that's one thing that definitely a lot of people consider when they buy a, an automobile. But is that even possible, even with the new cars, like hybrids that are gonna come out? We haven't crossed that bridge yet, right? Um, but the philosophy will remain the same. I would think that philosophy remains the same as to, there's a term that sometimes we use, it's not, did, we did not originate it, but it's called friction. What, what we philosophically try to do is to remove as much friction of the experience of owning a car, right? Case in point. Why five years? If you take uh, somebody like typically, okay, let's say I work, I'm a white collar worker, I work in a good company, I make enough money to buy a car, but I'm not a cash buyer. So uh, let's say I have a car plan, right? Yeah. So I work in Globe or Unilab, I have a car plan. The car plan is typically five years. Most companies are five years. So they give you a bunch of money and they said, okay, uh, Steven, you can buy a car. Let's say they give me two million. And I said, okay. I've always wanted a CX-5 Turbo and it's 2.3 million, okay. The company says, I'll give you two million, but if you want to buy a bigger car, more expensive, you, you basically take your money. So I, I top up uh, the 300,000 and I, so I go to the bank, the bank says, I'll give you a loan for five years. But the company says that the maintenance is on you. Yeah, typically. Yeah, maintenance on you. Because why? 
And I researched that, and the reason why the maintenance is on you is because we want you to take care of the car. We, we don't need to trash the car, we need to take care of the car. So you have to take care of the car. So they go to Mazda and say, hey, I just pay the monthly and I bring gas, you take care of everything else. That's removing one friction. So the other thing that I discovered with people who are uh, PMS, they say every six months of PMS, sometimes they can overshot it, they say budget problem. So I have to plan for it. In Mazda, you don't have to plan for it. Six months, you get a call. Hi, sir, can you bring a car in next week? The week after, yeah, okay. I bring it in, I sign up, I leave, and the car's been serviced with complete service history. So five years up, I sell the car. Uh, the company says, uh, five years later, this is part of our perks, retention program. You basically buy the car from the company for 10% of the value. See, there's nothing better than a ceramic knife, you know. The crisp, the crispness of the cut. You know that I'm such a great cook, I can burn water. You can, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's how good I am. So, Kako, yeah. who, who cooks at home? Who cooks at home? Um, I once in a while cook. Uh-huh. Um, I cook by picking up my phone and calling grab food. Uh-huh. That's the extent of my cooking. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, the Mazda booth at the recently concluded Philippine International Motor Show. Yeah. Dude, great job. That thing is, it's like a monument, man. It's like Mount Fuji or we'll call it Mount Mazda. I actually called it the Mazda Rice Terraces. It's actually, it's, it's massive, it's huge. Um, I gotta ask, how much did you spend on that? Well, then we can't talk about that. Why not? We can't talk about that because... Why not? You know, people will know how much we spend. So that's kind of a secret to us. But it's, uh, it is a lot of money. Do you think that everybody else should up their game too and spend a little bit more just like you guys did? I, I hope so. I hope so, right? Um, it's a lot of technology goes on now, right? It's a showcase of the brand. It's not necessarily just for the car, but you know, I think the design of the stand, we call it the Master Pavilion, right? I think the design of the stand should speak for the brand. In our case, uh, the Master brand design philosophy is clean, minimalistic, but, but attractive. Extreme. So we built yeah. three levels. Somebody said, is this the first time there's a three level? Uh, the answer is no. We did that years ago. We had three levels. We call it the waterfall. The waterfall idea comes around because we wanted to create space, individual space for each product. If you leave them on the floor, you can do that, but you need like a huge space. Yeah. Right? When I was running Thailand show, our stands are at least a thousand square meters. So you can have space that you open a door, you don't bump into each other. Right? Correct. You had the dresses of the models, those are all new? Do you, do you just, it's not off the rack or anything? Uh, no, the, we, we engaged a wow. design, a fashion designer called Andrea Titanko. Uh, she came in together with Ira, sit there and all the models come in. She has the final decision on the model. Because after she picks a model, they go into her dress shop and they get custom fit. Wow! Yeah. Boy, you guys spared no expense already. How much did you spend? <laughs> but it's it's part of the show, right? That's show yeah. business, right? It's in, in Filipino it would be bonga. It's yeah, it's huge. It, it's show business. And we went through the rehearsal, the way that we like the car has to be true lights, so that when you go in the first car that greets you is the platinum quartz. That's the new color. Yes, it's a master three, but it's the platinum quartz. We yeah. show you that's a welcome. The light comes on, it's a true color. You can't bring the sun in, but you can bring true lights in. That's why the light was Every car is individual. As we were presenting the cars, and I stood there and I said, this is the hybrid, and then I moved onto this car. This, car, this light dims and this car lights up, right? Yeah. What, what is it? It's theater. Show should be a theater, a play, a drama, and, and people said, oh, wow, nice. What is it about? It's presentation, it's theater. This isn't our first outing that has cooking in it. The first time we actually did it was when we did um, a trip out with the Mazda BT-50. Although that was sort of like, what was that? You can't say it was a mistake. It was a failure. 
So it wasn't a mistake, it was a failure. It wasn't edible. This one hopefully will be, because, well, I'm not the one doing the cooking. Steven is. We are going to do very simple food today. Uh, to show simplicity of ingredients and cooking that you can make nice tasting food with very simple ingredients. In here is leek and onion with a bit of oil, so we're going to saute that for a little bit. And we have very high quality, good uh, beef from a Korean shop near my, near my house. Uh, it has its own flavour, so you don't have to flavour very much. And this is for to, to put as topping for uh, udon. We made a very simple, clear broth called dachi with uh, konbu. Konbu is a seaweed that we, we put in earlier to soak in a water. Now we've taken it out. And then from there, we added um, bonito flakes. Bonito flakes adds the, the much more of the flavor of the fish in it. And uh, then we filter it, then we strain it, then the, the broth is clear. This and is, then this, this is, is for water. The yeah. This is, this is H, uh, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. It's, um, it can be found, it's, it's an abundant resource all over the world. But we, we got this specifically from Nawasa. Um, it has its own sort of like um, nutrients and, and minerals, but it's, 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 um, it's odorless, it's flavorless, but it's hot. Okay, so now the beef goes in. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, Kako is gonna help me do this. Um. Okay, hang on. I need protection. <laughs> Ready. Uh, we're cooking for a few more people, so I bought a two half kilos. Um. Hey, this is beef. This is beef. What's that? Uh, Japanese soy. Soy sauce? Yeah. You know what it smells like? It smells like raw beef and soy sauce. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Talking about the, uh, the Manila International Auto Show, one of the highlights was um, that you presented was in the center of the display, which was the 25th anniversary um, Miata Cup, or Miata Cup Philippines car, right? Right. right. And you just, you, you can't help but think that just exactly how important is the Miata Cup Club. or the Miata Club Philippines that Mazda themselves made a car specifically for them to celebrate the 25th anniversary. Just how big is the Philippine chapter uh, in Asia or how important is it to Japan? Singapore is a Miata Club. Malaysia has one, Thailand has one. Yeah. And so for every two years, they come together. And over the years, we kind of connected. And that was a big year for us. So we were invited there. And our club here got into the airplane um, and went to see them. We were invited to a dinner with them in a golf club. So we sat down. We are very well prepared. The one thing about the club, here is that they're always very well prepared to represent Philippines and the club. So we all wore a, a, a orange shirt and that was the 30th anniversary for... 2019 was the 30th anniversary, right? Yeah. So we put on the orange shirt, we sat down for dinner and half the table, half the dinner was in orange. And when we were done for the night, we had some games, we got up and left and the room empty. Right? We were as, as one country, we were as big as them combined. Wow. Some people ask me, so what does a club mean to you, the brand, as Mazda? I said, the closest I can come to is, without being too melodramatic, is that a club uh, can be described as the soul of the brand. Yeah, it's the, the club, soul of the brand. The soul of the brand. It's a, a, that the brand, the soul of the brand lives in the club because these are the people who came together because of, for example, Miata. Right? Without the Miata, you know, Miata is a glue that brings them together. So. We don't have to make a lot of noodles. I think. Okay. This is a sanuki noodle. They're made from a certain flour from Japan. Uh, the texture is very smooth and firm, but very smooth. 
right? Did you notice my bling? Wow. Very cool, man. <laughs> I got this from uh, Buckingham Palace. Very cool, man. What they have on display now yeah. is fake. It's the real <laughs> McCoy. Yeah, it is a small garnish, add some color, not just, you know. And uh, this is coming around nice. At home, normally I'll just use my hand, you know what I mean? What's stopping you? Yeah, but you know, we have guests. <laughs> oh, me? Oh. <laughs> Oh, and you add some of that too. Mm. You're ready to go. Now we just. A little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. Little bit. Mm, see? Okay. How simple is this, right? Yeah. You got it? You can do this at home after this? Yo! <laughs> okay, let's eat. So, would it be wrong if I ate this with a fork? Not wrong. It's not wrong. All right. Mm. I'm not very good with drumsticks. Where did you learn how to cook? I, I, I started cooking really early. It was school, where I left. I left home as a teenager. You left home as a teenager? So you left, you left home pretty young? Yeah, 15. I went to high school in Canada. How long have you been in the Philippines? A total of 13 years now. So what exactly were you doing the three years when you weren't with Mazda? I was at Fort. At Ford, okay. Yeah. And what was your position at Ford? I was the VP for marketing sales. When you were with Ford mm -hmm. for those three years, that was your first time in the Philippines? Yeah. You've spent more than a decade already in the country. Do you, do you see yourself retiring here? Yeah. I have more friends here than anywhere else in the world. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Well, we are a very friendly people. I don't know. I think Filipino sends out signals as they walk around. I think they see me as Filipino, they'll, they'll, they'll smile at me. What do you say? I'm not Filipino, but I understood what you just said. No, I just said, I was just, Mabuti. <laughs> <laughs> so, you spent time in Thailand, you spent time in the Philippines, mm -hmm. you're from Malaysia. How many languages do you speak? If you're a Malaysian and you're Chinese, you, will, you tend to grow up with a few languages already, right? The national language is Bahasa. Yeah. That's why you go to school. And English is a common medium of speaking to each other. So that's common. So I grew up uh, English as a... Second language. Uh, language in the school then. Then it was English. And then the Bahasa. And because you're Chinese, at home you speak Chinese. That's three. So that's three. And then when I went to Thailand, one of the thing about Thailand is that very few will speak English. And in the company, even though it's an American company, all the meetings typically are in Thai. Wow! Yeah. So you are forced to being a, have to speak. That's four. That's four, that's it. I can speak English. I can get away with Tagalog. Mm -hmm. I can understand some that's Spanish. Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then I'm pretty fluent in drunkenese. Mm. Mm. That's my fifth. It's fifth. Yeah. Drunkenese. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pretty fluent. <laughs> pretty yeah. fluent. Advanced level. <laughs> <laughs> You've met Hidalyn Diaz, right? In fact, weren't you at her wedding mm -hmm. in in Baguio? What is she like? Nice person. She's Scary, very, intimidating. She's very, very down to. She's refreshingly down to earth. Um, almost. Disarming. The almost disarming. I mean, not disarming. Really? I, mean, I mean, she could disarm me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there, there is a connection here between Hilin, the husband, and me um, because of the background. When the pandemic came, they were kind of trapped in Malaysia. They were there for training or for visit. And know. the pandemic came, they were trapped there and they would say that's one of the best things that happened to them. One of the, one thing that contributed to her focus in training was that she was there in a village, she was taken care of, but there was no, there was nothing else but training. But training. If you had to pick, would you do laksa or ramen? Ramen. Bulalo 
or sinigang? Actually, sinigang. Sinigang is one of my favorite food. Oh, really? Yeah. Best sinigang you've ever tried. And what type of sinigang? Bul uh, baboy. Baboy. Must be baboy, nothing else. No hipon, no, no fish. salmon, no fish, no chicken, baboy. As fat as possible. If you had to get a tattoo, what and where would it be? If I had to, if I, if I had to choose, I wouldn't have a tattoo. Yeah. But if I was forced to have a tattoo, I, I have no idea. Would you ever consider putting kako on your shoulder? My wife might beef me. Mm, but I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time when I was young, I wanted like a big dragon at the back. <laughs> when I take off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right, a big fan of like Bruce Lee. If you had a genie in a bottle, could grant you one wish for real, what would that wish be? Would it be work, tell me first if it would be work related or family related, and then what would that wish be? Taller. You took mine. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to be 5'8". You have a genie in a bottle and you're gonna stick to 5'8". What's wrong with 5'10"? 6'1". <laughs> Dude! Uh, the choices in life diminishes as you get taller than that, I think. Cars... You're telling me that somebody 5'10 yeah, won't fit inside an MX-5? Yeah, right. When people say that, oh, you fly, when you fly, I say, I fly A380 economy. I say, nothing wrong with it. The seat is big enough for me. I don't... You have a leg room problem? I don't have a leg room problem. <laughs> no, I, I... I don't. No, I, I don't. don't right? I do. Hey, listen, a bit of advice for you, from you, please. You have an earring. Mm -hmm. I had an earring, actually I had two. Now my son wants to get an earring. Is there any way that you can help me convince him not to get one? No, I can't. I, I don't have the credibility to do that. Neither do I. I work for a US company and they are very conservative. My boss then said, uh, on your trip to Detroit, can you remove your earring? Because, you know, they may have the wrong impression of you. What'd you say? No way. That's me. Antonio, if you're watching this, this does not give you the excuse to do what it is that you want to do. Anton, go for it. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> go for it. Follow your destiny, son. Who are you, Mufasa? <laughs> My final question for you this afternoon is, um, brings me back to the review that we just did, that Jack and I did, of the CX-5 all-wheel drive turbo there was a question in that video that I need to ask. On a scale of one to 10, on behalf of my wife, how much trouble would we be in if we never actually returned the car? Not much. Um, I just have to give a call to Robert Cuyuto and say the car's gone. Yeah! Thanks very much, Stephen. All this right. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for cooking, man. Okay.